So we now have our second big award show finally underway in award season, that being the Critics' Choice Awards of 2019, and we now have the full list of winners. I know I'm a bit of a day late to this video, but I was very, very busy yesterday, so... I am uh, doing it today. Also, stay tuned to the channel later on today. I'm going to be having my review for the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer, so that'll also be coming up later today. But in this video, we're going to be going through all the winners from all categories from the Critics' Choice Awards, and there's quite a lot of them, so uh, let's just jump through. And again, if you see me looking down, I am looking at my phone, so just to pre-warn you guys. And also, as always, with these award season videos, no cuts, no edits, just straight talking. So let's jump into it. First off, Best Animated Feature went to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I think, honestly, this is a clear direction that Spider-Man is just going to sweep the Animation Awards, which I'm very happy about, because it's really nice just to see something that's not Disney Pixar to win these awards, because obviously normally Pixar just sweeps it every year, there's no competition, it's just, yep, Pixar's going to win. But to see Spider-Verse, especially because it's so good as well, to see it finally get that justice and to win those awards, because it, ha it hasn't exactly won over the box office and general audiences, but it really has won over the critics. And I think that's a really nice thing to see, uh, especially for an animated comic book movie. That's really nice to see. So I'm very happy with that. Uh, best foreign language film, no surprise here, it went to Roma. Obviously, I still haven't seen Roma yet. It's still on my Netflix list. It's, it's still there. Uh, I will get around to it eventually. Um, it's just, I have so much stuff to get through. So, Roma, again, out of all the other ones... It's, again, it's, it's not really any competition against Roma. Like, Shoplifters, I heard, is very, very good, but the rest of them aren't really getting much traction. Uh, best action movie, I was so happy to see go to Mission Impossible Fallout. I love Mission Impossible Fallout. I think it's the best in the franchise. I think that movie is just, like, the top bar for, like, what action movies should be held to. Like, that and Mad Max Fury Road are, like, the two films for what action movies should be held to these days. So, very nice to see that, especially with what it was up against as well. Very nice to see Mission Impossible come out on top there. Uh, best song, once again, went to Shallow for A Star Is Born. Not a real surprise. In terms of, like, all the other nominations, not really much... I would have chosen on top of that, so I guess that does make sense. I do really like all the stars from Black Panther. I love the whole Black Panther album, uh, but I still think that Shallow is the best. Um, best Young Actress really was a great choice. Went to Elsie Fisher for 8th Grade. 8th Grade hasn't come out here yet, but all I've heard is fantastic things about it, and Elsie Fisher's performance is apparently absolutely breathtaking, so I'm very excited to see that movie. It would have been nice to see Thomas and McKenzie win for Leave No Trace. That was a really good movie, and she was great in that film. Um, also, Amanda Stamberg, I really liked her in The Hate You Give, and Millicent Simmons for A Quiet Place, I think that's a really good one as well, uh, but I think Elsie Fisher was probably the most deserving, even though I haven't seen the movie yet. Uh, best Supporting Actor, once again, went to Mahershala Ali for Green Book. Uh, great choice. I, I love Green Book. You know, I've, I, I can't say this enough about Green Book, how much I adore that film and how much I adore his performance. I'm very excited, actually, because I'm going to be watching uh, True Detective Season 3, so I'm very excited to see his performance there, uh, too. Uh, Timothy Chalamet actually got a nomination here, which was cool to see. Sam Elliott also got a nomination. Michael B. Jordan also got one for Black Panther, which I thought was awesome. And uh, Adam Driver, as I mentioned earlier, uh, for Black Klansman, which is great. Uh, I find it really interesting though that Michael B. Jordan got nominated. I think that's really cool. He's kind of been a bit of a, a bit of a dark horse this award season for Black Panther. Uh, Best Supporting Actress, once again, went to Regina King for If Beale Street Could Talk. Um, she seems to be pretty much the contender for this award, regardless across all shows, uh, because Emma Stone and Rachel Weisz, I think, kind of cancel each other out. Uh, Amy Adams is kind of snubbed most of the time. Same with Claire Foy. And Nicole Kidman has kind of got other stuff going on with, like, Destroyer. I think a lot more people are focused on that role for her instead of her role in Boy Erased. But I feel Regina King is definitely a deserving winner. I'm seeing Beale Street at the end of this month, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, best sci-fi or horror movie went to A Quiet Place. Um, out of the other nominations, I definitely think that was the most deserving winner. I mean, Annihilation, I know, is very, very popular, but I don't know if that's popular with necessarily everybody. A Quiet Place seems to be the film out of those five that is the most universally loved. So I think that made sense. Uh, best acting ensemble went to The Favourite. Uh, the favorite didn't win that much, which did really surprise me. And given the fact it won best best acting ensemble, I actually think it's very surprising. Given the fact it went up against Crazy Rich Asians and went up against Black Panther, and it came up on top of both of them, I think that's quite surprising. I wouldn't have personally voted for the favorite in that department, but I still think the favorite is a great film and great performances all around. 
Uh, best Adapted Screenplay went to Barry Jenkins for If Beale Street Could Talk. And again, I think that does make sense, you know, given the fact this is this is the guy who did Moonlight, so there's Moonlight there. So, you know, it does make sense. Uh, best Original Screenplay went to Paul Schrader for First Reformed. This is kind of the first we're starting to see a First Reformed come up in award season. That was the Ethan Hawke movie. Uh, so that's very interesting to see that one come up. Um, best Actress in a Comedy went to Olivia Colman for The Favour. I think that's a great choice. I love Olivia Colman. I think she's fantastic. I've been a big fan of her, you know, even back in her early sort of British comedy days. Um, she's very, very good. And against other those those other ones, I mean, it would have been nice maybe to see a bit of con like Constance, Constance Wu get in there for Crazy Rich Asians. Charlie Theron for Tully. That is a brilliant film that nobody is talking about. But I think Olivia Colman, like, she's so good in The Favourite. So I think that's a, a perfectly, you know, perfectly adequate choice. Um, best actor in a comedy went to Christian Bale for Vice. I'm seeing Vice tomorrow as I'm recording this. I'm very, very excited. Uh, but Christian Bale is kind of, you know, an awards darling at this point. We all love him and they all do as well. Some really good competitors, though, like Jason Bateman got a nomination for Green Book, which was, oh, Game Night, not Green Book. Uh, but that was very cool. And Viggo Mortensen did get one for Green Book. Uh, John C. Riley for Stan and Ollie. Ryan Reynolds for Deadpool 2. And Lakeith Stanfield for Sorry to Bother You. So that was actually a really good category there. Uh, best comedy overall went to Crazy Rich Asians. Very happy to see that. I really loved Crazy Rich Asians. And again, out of those other ones, I mean, The Death of Stalin got a nomination, which was really cool. Uh, Sorry to Bother You also got a nomination. Game Night got, like, Game Night did very well, given the fact it got these nominations. I would have never expected that. But um, I, I, I love Game Night, but I'm surprised it did that well. Uh, but Crazy Rich Asians, I'd definitely say, is the most deserving. Uh, best score, once again, went to Justin Hurwitz for First Man. Completely deserving. That score is brilliant. Just the moon landing scene alone, you will walk away from that film. Just the reason why that scene is so memorable is not just because of the meaning of it in the cinematography, but the score as well. The score just flares up, and it's a beautiful scene. Without Justin Hurwitz's score, that scene would have had nowhere near as much impact as it did. And now here's the controversial one. Uh, best visual effects went to Black Panther. Um, this is completely wrong. I, I mean, normally I'm not somebody who outrightly disagrees with an award because I normally feel like everybody is deserving in some way. Um, but out of all the other choices, like Black Panther was easily the weakest, especially when you get to the third act. The third act special effects are not good. I'm sorry, they're not. They're really weak and they're really obvious. It looks very fake. Like, even if they wanted to give this to a Disney Marvel movie, it would have been much better to give it to a F Infinity War, which was also nominated. I personally probably would have given it to First Man, but I think, you know, giving it to Black Panther, I don't know why that happened. I really don't. I don't know what was happening with the critics there, but I guess it, it won Best Visual Effects, so whatever. Uh, best hair and makeup went to Vice for obviously Christian Bale's prosthetics as Dick Cheney. I think that's definitely a good choice as well. It's very reminiscent to that of Gary Oldman last year for Darkest Hour, so it's kind of like that, kind of in the same, uh, kind of in the same vein. Uh, best costume design went to Ruth Carter for Black Panther. I think that's definitely a great choice. Like Black Panther's costume design was very, very good. You know, definitely gave off the sort of African, you know, Wakandan vibe. That was very, very cool. And against the other ones, I mean, it is quite surprising that it beat out stuff like Mary Queen of Scots and The Favourite and even Mary Poppins Returns, but I think that's still a really good choice. Uh, best editing went to Tom Cross for First Man. Uh, I'm just really happy that First Man is actually getting these awards. I think that's a really nice just change of pace because First Man has kind of been a sleeper in the award season. Like, nobody's really talking about it, so it's nice to see that. Uh, best production design also went to Black Panther. I could definitely agree with that. I think Black Panther, you know, in terms of like the Marvel movies, in terms of creating a vibe, Black Panther did it perfectly. It really brings you into the world of Wakanda very, very well. Uh, best cinematography went to Alfonso Cuaron for Roma. Uh, I think that's a great, you know, that's just great to see Alfonso Cuaron not only take this as a director, but also to take it as a cinematographer as well. And then, yeah, the next category, best director went to also Alfonso Cuaron for Roma. You know, Roma is actually doing really well this award season, given the fact that it's not only a Netflix movie, but also a foreign language film. It's really nice to see that actually just get so high up in these awards. And the critics absolutely ate up Roma. So given the fact that this is the Critics' Choice Awards, it makes a lot of sense that it was doing that well. Uh, Best Actress, we had a tie with uh, Glenn Close for The Wife, who got obviously the Golden Globe last week, and Lady Gaga for A Star Is Born. Um... I'm not going to lie, I'm not too happy with this whole idea of a tie. I think that's kind of cheating. Um, but 
still, out of those two choices, I mean, I haven't seen The Wife, not many people have, but I think, the, you know, Glenn Close, she is kind of a legacy actress at this point. You know, she's had a very long-lasting career, and I think, obviously, she's going to do very well. And Lady Gaga was brilliant in A Star is Born. The fact she was able to hold that movie was very, very impressive. There's a fly in the way. But also, the fact that she was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bradley Cooper, a very established actor, was extremely impressive. So I'm very, very happy with that. I'm not too happy about the tie thing, like I say, but... It's just, it just feels like it's a bit cheating. Uh, best actor overall went to Christian Bale for Vice once again. Um, again, in terms of like the other choices, like Willem Dafoe actually got nominated for it at Eternity's Gate, which was nice. Ryan Gosling even got nominated nominated for First Man, so that was really cool to see. And finally, best picture went to Roma, which I was very surprised about actually. The fact that it won best picture overall, so it got best foreign language film, best cinematographer, best director, but it got best picture overall at the Critics Choice Awards, which I think proves the how you know, how high up critics hold Roma in comparison to other films. Like, people really realise that, yes, this film is fantastic. And all these awards really just make me want to bu just buckle down and watch this movie eventually because it just, it, it looks amazing and apparently it is. So I'm very, very excited to sit down and see it. But best picture for Roma, I'm very, very happy for it given the fact it came out on top of everything else. I think that's a great, great award for Roma. So that does bring us to the close of the Critics' Choice Awards. I know this one was a bit more quick and a bit more, uh, you know, stuff like that. But it's sometimes with these award shows, it's just like you feel like you're repeating yourself sometimes. So I kind of wanted to cut that out as much as possible. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure you tell me your reactions to the Critics' Choice Awards. And make sure you stay tuned to the channel for later on today for my Spider-Man Far From Home trailer review. And also, if you want to see more award season coverage, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a video. And I hope to see you guys again in the next one.